It's very easy year after year when we commemorate the lives lost in the Holocaust to start to feel that these were people who lived a very long time away uh, ago in a place that must be very different from where we live now. But actually, these events happened in the time of our parents and our grandparents. Uh, most of us have had interactions with people who bore the scars of what happened in Germany. And Germany at the time was considered to be not just a, a civilized, but an enlightened community, a democracy. And yet, they slid into one of the worst periods and worst atrocities that mankind has ever seen. Not just the murder of people, but the systematic, factory-like, planned execution of millions of men, women, and children. It's so important that we tell survivor stories, not just while they're still with us, and they are still with us, and hopefully will be for years to come, but so that people remember what happened and always remember that we are just as civilized and we are just as enlightened. And that without being deliberate and intentional, we also could always slide into some sort of atrocity, a situation where we are so willing to demonize other people and hate other people that we allow the unthinkable to happen. Maybe not on a grand scale, but even in a small scale. And we can't allow that to happen. We also need to make sure that people understand what a Nazi really is and what the Holocaust really was. I myself was called a Nazi by people in bullhorns just this year outside the Capitol from people who thought that asking people to wear a mask or get vaccinated was the same as what happened in the Holocaust. And we have to stand up and say that that also is inexcusable. Now, when I graduated college, I was offered a job from a friend of a friend and it was my first real job after college, you know, which is in some ways your most important job, that first one that sets you on your career path. And I went to work for a lovely man who was a film producer in New York City. And he was bright, and he was fun, and he was a great boss. And we are to this day still close friends. In fact, they were just at my house a few weeks ago. He is also a Holocaust survivor. My friend Benny Corzin was born in Denmark in 1938. Germany invaded Denmark April 1940, and until August 1943, life in Denmark unfolded as though World War II was happening somewhere else. But it wasn't. All of that changed in 1943. Adolf Eichmann sent a telefax to the German embassy in Copenhagen, ordering the Gestapo to round up all of the Danish Jews, about 7,400 people. Word got out. 7,000 people managed to go into hiding, hoping to make it to safety in Sweden. 400 were unfortunately captured and sent to the camps. In the chaos of going into hiding, Benny's parents decided to leave him with a Gentile family in the outskirts of Copenhagen. On a dark night in November 1943, he was brought to a small boat that crossed the water between Denmark and Sweden, which brought Benny and six adults to Sweden where his father had been waiting nervously for several days. In 1960, Benny worked as a production assistant at a small film production company in Copenhagen, and a crew from CBS and from New York arrived to make a documentary about what happened in 1943 in Denmark. Benny and the production company interviewed many of the members of the Danish resistance movement, including the very man on whose boat he was taken to Sweden. That man said to Benny, we don't know any Jews. All I and my group knew was that they were Danes who needed help. He and his group crossed the turbulent sound between Denmark and Sweden 142 times until that man was captured by the Germans in March of 1944. He was sent to a camp until the end of World War II where he miraculously survived. If only all citizens of all countries looked at their fellow countrymen, fellow citizens, and said, they are my brothers, they are my sisters, and I will protect them. Thank you.